Right. Okay. Then at this time, based on. I mean, I'll let my client address those issues in his argument because I, I, don't, I don't believe he's. I believe it's best he just addresses those in his in what he wants to tell the court. Okay. I think it's consistent. Okay. So then based on the testimony, I am going to find counts two, four, and five true. And uh, there was no agreement. This was unagreed. Uh, the underlying offenses are both same. Aggravated robbery, first degree felonies. All right, Mr. Parker, you may proceed. Your Honor, um, this this is you know a tough case. Um, I've talked to Mr. Johnson at length. He's he's young, and the court hears this all the time, and he's been given chances. However, I think it's taking him sitting in jail for some period of time to realize, you know, how serious this is and how serious we should take take probation. I think one of the problems is something I, you know, I hear quite often. I think the court does too, is that, you know, a defendant doesn't report to their to the probation officer and they they get scared or they know they have um, they haven't shown up and they're afraid that they're not they're going to get arrested if they show up. Instead of reaching out to probation and asking for help, and it just snowballs where you have all these, you know, failure to report and things such as that. Um, and he, um, thank you. Thank you. and and it becomes a problem. You know, he doesn't he doesn't have any major. He hasn't committed any serious crimes while he's been on probation that I'm aware of. Um, he's continued to smoke marijuana. And I think there's other ways to address that than sitting in prison. Um, he wants to address the court about these other things, but and I'll and I'll let him address those in more particular in regard to those things and the, the response that I think he acknowledges that he he doesn't provide verification, but he was working and he had been participating in the GED. He just didn't provide verification. He's about to take the test, and he claims he did not know about the MRT. But he'd like to address the court about several things. Judge. Pull your mask down. I want to first um, just say um, I take full accountability for all my actions that I did when I was on probation. And I know that even though that I couldn't get the fees, I didn't have the money. I'm not but, worried about the fees. Okay, but at the time, you're on our own. I wasn't taking my meds. Um, I'm an MH and Mark's spill top. I take meds from major depression and bipolar disorder. So at the time, I was really just going through it with my mental health, and I was trying to really just find myself, but I couldn't find myself at the time. So I was afraid, thinking I was going to go to jail, get time, be sent to prison for the rest of my life. So I was afraid, yes, ma'am, I did run. And at the time, I was, I'm, I'm a single parent. I don't got help with my daughter. She's six years old. I don't have no money. You know, at the same time, I just try to keep myself grounded. And I don't want to just feel like that I'm just trying to manipulate the system because I'm not not at all on that. But... <laughs> So I've heard, so here's the thing. It's unfortunate when I re start remembering the exact same things that you're saying, right? You've said this to me before. This is your third motion to revoke your probation. You're on probation for being part of going to a home with people in masks and guns and robbing people and you got probation in the first place. Then I gave you a second chance. Then I gave you a third chance. And you want me to give you a fourth chance? You've had all the opportunities through probation to better yourself, to take advantage of programs. I sent you to ISF, cognitive and substance abuse, to get help so that you would quit smoking marijuana and start doing the right things because you stood there and said, I'm a single parent and I've got these issues and I'm trying to do these things. You can't keep saying the same thing. At some point, you just have to stop and do what you're supposed to do. Yes, and you haven't. So, uh, Ms. Malfino. Uh, Judge, you actually just took the argument right out of Sorry. Mouth. I was going to say the exact same thing. I remember this young man in 2019. His co-defendant got 25 years that day. And that's probably what he should have gotten. But we gave him that chance. We gave him another chance. We gave him another chance. Then he ran for a year. And here he is again. I recommend no less than 25, Judge. He knew exactly what was on the line of course, I would also defer to anything Ms. Lopez has to add. Do you have anything to add, Ms. Lopez? Excuse me, Ms. Um, I'm a woman. 
I understand that everything right now sounds bad, but I have a lot of potential. And I've been sitting You do trying, have a lot of, you trying. did have a lot of potential and you might still have a lot of potential, but you have had more opportunities than just about anyone that comes into this court, which to me was unfortunately when I keep giving you chances and it probably wasn't agreed to, it's just like you're thumbing your nose at me. Right. She's not going to send me to prison. She didn't the first time. She didn't the second time. She didn't the third time. It's all good. I'm just going to go in and I'm going to just say I'm, I need some help. I need help. And cause number, I mean, it, really, I went back and looked at the underlying facts of this case and it's truly amazing. And I don't know what I was thinking this entire time, to be honest. I want to give people chances and I do that. And a lot of times people take advantage of them. But the fact that you have taken advantage of me now four times, cause number 28822, I'm going to find, again, you entered your pleas of true to counts one, three, and six freely and voluntarily. I'm going to find, again, counts two, four, and five true, find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. And at this time, find you guilty of aggravated robbery. I'm going to sentence you to a term of 25 years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You do receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody, but the law gives you the right to receive. I am making an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon. In cause number 28824, I'm also going to find, again, that you pled true to counts one, three, and six. Find counts two, four, and five true. <coughs> find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. And at this time, find you guilty of aggravated robbery, sentence you to a term of 25 years in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You do receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. I'm also making an affirmative finding in that case of a deadly weapon. These cases will run concurrently, which means together at the same time. I'm going to hand you the trial court certification and you'll need to sign it with your lawyer. It says that this wasn't agreement. And so you do have some rights to appeal. And once you sign that, I'll give you a copy of it. And then I'm also going to hand you, go ahead, y'all do that first. <clears throat> That's fine. I'm also handing you the trial court certification. You can just give them, I can here, give it to me. Parker, if you'll sign off on that and then I'll get you the copy. It's probably not going to help at this point. Understood. Don't make it worse. Be careful. I'm not going to make it worse. I'm not, I'm not going to act out. I'm not going to lash out. Like some people would. I'm going to keep my composure. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm a child of God. And I know at the end of the day that God, God got a final sense of anything that's going on in school. He does. So I'm going to keep praying and keep keep my faith. I'm not going to let this break me. I'm not gonna let the tab it on the I don't want this to break you. I want you to keep your faith. I want you to go to prison. I want you to actually learn like you haven't learned before and come out a better person. That's what I want you to do. I'm also handing you a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgments entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term and you should read the written admonishment I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long that lasts, you can talk to your attorney. Good luck to you, sir. You can go back with the bailiff. Yeah, thank you, sir. Well, thank you. All right.